Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I love you. Um, God is good, and He's uh, showed me some things recently, and uh, I feel He's putting it on my heart to share it with you. Um, we're supposed to put on love in these end times, not hate or. Uh, backbiting um, and there's a far dif difference between uh, biblical love and worldly love it's far different worldly love worldly love is it's, 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 a, it's a farce it's it's not even close to what biblical love is I found this article and it's worldly love versus biblical love. And it's a, it's a, it goes over how worldly love is totally different than what God's love is. God's love is agape love, unconditional love. Meaning his love never changes. And uh, th this came from uh, www itw.org and you, you could just type in worldly versus biblical love if you want to find the article actually I can link it in the description but uh, we're gonna get 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 on with this but before I do that I want to pray for wisdom and guidance from our Father in heaven in the name of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach Amen okay there are many false ideas about what love is today. There is perhaps no word in the English language that has been more twisted, contorted, distorted, and misunderstood than the word love. And that is true. You see, in order to love, we have to get that from God. That, that is a gift from God, I believe. I believe that's one of the gifts of the Spirit. And that's the mo most important one. Because if you're truly loving with true love, then you're, you, you'll be patient, you'll be faithful, you'll be honest. Um, you won't be proud or boastful or arrogant. Um, you'll be selfless like Christ was if we put on love. And on with article. What we see modeled for us on television and in the movies is a complete misre misrepresentation of biblical love. What is tricky is that they seem so similar. World love is a counterfeit love, and although it seems similar to biblical love, it is inherently different. And I agree with that. It's far different. Although both have a strong sense of concern, a focus on meeting needs and a desire for, for well-being and fulfillment, their primary focus is very different. In the world's view of love, the self is the recipient of these things. With biblical love, others are the recipients as we receive them and share the selfless love that God has given us. Now we all can work towards being perfect in love, and that's actually what Christ wants. He wants us to work perfect in love. He wants us to be holy as He is holy. Um, and I gotta admit, I thought I knew what love was. No. No, now He's showing me what love is. And the best way to get that, like I said, is just, just pray without ceasing for love. And... Uh, Pray, pray the blood of Jesus over all strongholds, over your life, and it, it, it works pretty good. The world tells us that we have found love when we find someone who makes us feel special, make, makes our days brighter, meets our needs, and realizes how special we are. The world's idea of love is, is completely self-centered. Now God's love is selfless. Christ came into the Actually, it was God who came into the flesh as Christ Jesus. 
in Genesis, the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Let us make man in our own image and after our own likeliness. And what it means by that, this is where the ancient aliens get their little theories, which, you know, I feel bad for them because there is a God in heaven and everybody's going to figure that out. And everybody's going to know pretty soon that God is control of all is in control of all things. And that he has to say and he has the glory. And all of us need to work for his will and for his purpose. And only for his will and only for his purpose. And if we are not doing that, then we're lukewarm. The Spirit has been telling me these things. Consistently. And it's consistently lining up with the word of God. Now, back to what I was saying, though. Christ made the ultimate sacrifice. He gave up his own life for the sins of the world. He was spit on. He was ridiculed. He was scourged. He had nails or stakes just hammered right through his arms to, to a cross or a pole. I'm not going to say it was a cross. I think that they want us worshiping a cross. I know that a lot of people are going to get upset with that, but that's just the way it is. Honesty is loving your neighbor. Anyways, uh, moving on. The Bible tells us that true love, revealed in Jesus Christ, finds its power in God and is expressed in our care for others. This is true in every arena that love touches. It is true in our relationships with our brothers and sisters in Christ. It is true in our families and our homes. It is especially true with our spouses. We're supposed to be gentle to our wives. And part of true love, I have recently found out, is actually loving ourselves. Not a self-centeredness of loving ourselves, but a humbleness to loving ourselves. If that makes any sense to you. It makes a lot of sense to me. The root of the world's counterfeit love is sin. It is based on the idea that the whole in one's life can be filled by one oneself or by receiving love from another human being. This is counterfeit. And it isn't love. It, is, it puts pressure on another person to meet our needs when they fail, we experience pain. And and uh, another thing is is if you watch television, well, I don't do that, but I know a lot of other people who who do. Um, I honestly don't watch no television at all. All I do is listen to the Bible. Period. Uh, All you see on TV is just sex and nudity and half-naked women and the same with men. I mean, it, it's just disgusting. I, I, I couldn't watch it anymore. I could not be in Christ and watch that filth any longer. I, I, I couldn't. And, and anybody who is in Christ will not. He said, you shall know them by their fruits. You shall know them by their fruits. If they're not putting on love then how can we say we are really in Christ if we're not putting on love? That's something that we all need to think about. Because Christ said, the one that shall endure until the end shall be saved. So that right there says that there is no pre-tribulation rapture. Now I believe that the rapture is the second advent of Christ, right before the wrath of God is poured out. That's my own belief. I don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. I think it's false. I think the only rapture or rapture that is spoken of is when we're gathered back to Christ at his second coming at the seventh trump. And another thing, Satan comes first. Satan comes first, claiming to be Jesus Christ returned. And he's going to deceive a lot of people because he's going to do exactly what everybody thinks Jesus would do. He is coming first. Six comes before seven. The sixth trump, the sixth vial, and the sixth seal, six, six, six. Let him who readeth understand. 
let, let, let the man calculate the number of the beast. It's not hard to calculate that number. Which what what what, what John was saying in the book of Revelation was he comes at the sixth vial, the sixth trump, and the sixth seal. Which we are in a period of grace and learning right now, and we are nearing the end of that. That's why a lot of people are seeing 555 and all these different repeating numbers. Because we're still in God's grace right now. But pretty soon, and I'm talking very soon, Antichrist is going to show up. And he shall deceive the whole world except the elect of Christ. And the elect of Christ, that's a whole different study. Oh yeah, moving on. Okay. We may label this pain as communication issues, differing agendas, or conflicting goals, but those issues are merely symptoms of the greater issue. Sin has made us self-centered and hindered our ability to cry out to receive true and healing love from God. Now I'm going to stop this right now just to go to one place in Ezekiel chapter 28 and we're going to see where Satan was judged to death to die because he, he is the only creation that's been judged thus far to die he's the only one and I really 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 hope other people get this and I don't want a whole bunch of messages saying that I'm going to hell we're not even supposed to say that for one thing Christ said not to say who's going to ascend into the abyss because that would bring him up from from the abyss and n not to say who's going to ascend into heaven that's that is to bring him down we're not supposed to say such things that's not our place that's God's place anyways book of Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 1 the word of the Lord came again unto me saying and he's talking to Ezekiel Verse 2, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now Tyrus, there was actually a prince of Tyrus, but he was a type of Satan. A type as in, um, there's types and examples in the Bible that we are to live by. And to, to show us the meaning of things that we may understand with our feeble human minds. Prince of Tyrus is actually a name for Satan, too. Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, does that not sound familiar? Second Thessalonians chapter 2, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, neither be troubled in spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Not me, not the preacher who claims to be a preacher. Not the person over there who claims to be a Christian. This is your salvation. You should not trust your salvation to a man. We're supposed to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. It is written. Anyways. Now. Who opposeth himself, okay, no, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that is the great apostasy, and okay, how is it that Christianity is one of the biggest religions in the entire world, and, but the whole world wanders after the beast, it is written, you ever wonder how that happens, because, there is no rapture. The rapture is a lie. And when people find out there is no rapture, when they're deceived by Satan, the Antichrist, who comes back acting like Jesus Christ, he's the abyss from, he is the, he is the angel of the bottomless pit. You can look up Abaddon and Napoleon in the Greek, in the Hebrew, and it goes right back to the son of perdition. I've done so myself, but I want you to go look for yourself so you can concrete it in your own mind. And what is this? It's, I'm saying the, the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 for a reason. Because it is a straight overlay of this book of Ezekiel chapter 28. Because it says, 
He opposeth himself and exalteth himself above the all that is called God or that is worshipped. So he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That prideful heart of his that led for his fall, that led to his fall. He had a very prideful heart, and he wanted to be just like God, and he coveted, envied his mercy seat, the throne of God, and tried to take it by force, like they all have been doing from the beginning. Now, it says, Ezekiel, in chapter, uh, in chapter 28, verse 2, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, and seas represents people, yet thou art a man, and not God, thou, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. In, in other words, since you think that you're God, this is what God says, verse 3, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Daniel none understood the vision. If you go back and you read the book of Daniel, specifically chapter 8 and 9, when it's speaking of the visions, he did not understand what he was seeing. And Daniel was very wise in the word. Daniel was very wise. And he did not understand it. And it says right here, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Verse 4, So get in, get in our Father's word, and you better be studying that, these scriptures, because uh, Satan knows the word of God like the back of his hand, and I am not joking. The only way we are going to overcome is through Christ Jesus. There is no other way. There is no, no other way under heaven that we can do so. We are saved by His blood and only His blood. And that is it. We are not righteous. Christ is righteous. It's His righteousness that saves us. We are saved by faith through grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasuries. Verse 5. By thy great wisdom, and by thy traffic, traffic his speech and his actions, hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. See, mo most pe most Christians, and I I'm, not, I'm not bragging on anybody, I just... <sighs> this is serious, man. This is serious to the core, serious. We are to have a passion and a zeal for God, and that's what he wants. We are to be serious about this, because he's serious about all of this. This ain't a joke. This world and everything in it is a test. It is a test, and we are being tested to see who will stand for themselves, who will stand with Satan, or who will stand with God. And that's why we're here. And I made my decision. I hope you make the right one. I'm not saying y'all didn't. I'm just saying if anybody's watching this, getting offended a little bit, you know, we must speak bold the word of God. Verse 6, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. Verse 7, Behold, therefore I will bring the strangers upon thee, the terrible of nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom. Okay, now these strangers, these strangers are the elect of God. That's who he is speaking of right now. Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall d draw their swords, take the ass off the, off the swords, it's the word of God, against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Now Satan, or Lucifer in the age that was, was a covering cherubim of the mercy seat of God. He was a protecting cherubim, in other words, an archangel. Verse 8, They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas, in the midst of the people. Verse 9, Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, that man of sin, son of perdition, and no God, and the hand of him that slayeth thee. 
I love how he says that. Verse 10, Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. And this right here, 11 on down, is when you really find out that he's talking to Satan. Verse 11, Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation, which is a funeral song, upon the king of Tyrus. Now he's called king, because he thinks he's the king, which he's not. There's one Lord of Lord and King of Kings, and he ain't it. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 13, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. That little slithery serpent from the beginning has been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and thy, of thy pipes was prepared in thee the day that thou was created. In other words, they rejoiced. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Verse 15. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created until iniquity was found in thee. Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, when he gets cast out of, out of heaven, to come to this earth, act like, like Jesus Christ, is what it's talking about right now. You can go to Revelations, chapter 12, it says the same thing. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Verse 17, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. And he, he, he was the most beautiful of all angels. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by thy reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. In other words, they're going to be in awe of, of it. Verse 18, Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and will bring thee to ashes upon the earth, in the sight of all that behold thee. And behold, you can account this as to all them that follow him too. Verse 19, All that the, all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished. Oh, and they will be. At thee, thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. In other words, blotted out. That's what it means to die the second death. You're blotted out. A lot of people think that people are burning in hell right now. No, they're waiting. They're, everybody's awaiting judgment. Everybody is gathered to the great white throne, throne judgment of God and judged at the same time. Not a minute till it is written. So don't let somebody trip you up with that because it's, that, that's a lie. There's a lot of things that we weren't taught about the Word of God. A lot. And I used to believe in the rapture. I was, I was dead set on it. Until the Spirit showed me that it was nothing but a lie. Under the grace of God. Now we're going to go back to this article and then I'm going to close this. Because uh, <clears throat> my, wife, my wife's got work and I don't want to keep her up. Okay. We may label this pain. Oh no, we already been through that. Okay. And here's a prayer that they want you to pray, but I'm, I, yeah, we'll just pray it. Fa Father, I have been looking for worldly love when I need, when what I need is biblical love. I need your true and healing love to fill my life. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen. And then I'm going to close with this. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 5 and verse 7. And may the Lord's peace rest upon all of you.
And may you glean some understanding from this about things that people say that are true that are not. And I love you all. And may God just bless you. In Jesus Christ's precious name I pray, amen.